Testing, can you hear me? We're good? Yeah, we're good. Right? Yeah. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 113th Race Mackinac presented by Ring Trust. Thank you for all coming. Great. Could be a great one. As, as I, uh, my name's Nick McGarry, and I have the distinct privilege of serving as commodore here at the Chicago Yacht Club. I want to extend a warm welcome to everyone using our facilities. We welcome you at all times, but especially this very special race. Uh, as I mentioned, the Warning Gun Party last night, what a journey that brought us here today. Uh, two years ago, we had to cancel the race, only the second time in its 100 plus year history. Last year, we had restricted docking at uh, Mackinac Island, prohibiting rafting. And this year, the race, the Mac is back in full. So we're looking forward to a great one, and it should make it just an extra special race. Um, the first and foremost person we want to thank, and, and uh, as a representative here, is the U.S. Coast Guard. We have Lieutenant Overstreet here. Let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you for your service and thank you for following the fleet up to Mackinac Island. Um, our volunteers that make this possible, I'd like to start off with the MAC committee. We have our chair here, Sam Bayou, who you'll be hearing from in a few minutes. As many of you know, this the committee starts the day the race is over the prior year and has literally been working around the clock to make this happen. Our race committee, we have over 100 people that serve our race committee here at, the, at the, uh, Chicago Yacht Club. Uh, Tom Sabluski is our chair and our PRO for today's race, Jen Steffer. Yeah. Welcome. We have a very distinguished panel of judges for uh, the race. Uh, Ken Hawkins, Mike Casper, Wendy Lowe, Patricia O'Donnell. Let's give them a big round of applause. There you go. Thank you for helping us out. And the uh, Chicago Yacht Club staff, we have our on the water director, Skip Deeball and our Chicago Regatta uh, manager, Chuck Neville, together with our general manager who's inside, taking care of all your food and beverage needs, both on and off the water. So we appreciate all of the efforts that have gone into this, all the time and our hours. Uh, we also have to thank those that have made the financial contribution without which this race is not possible. So I'd like to just take a moment to thank our sponsors. Uh, our presenting sponsor has been, is Wintrust. This is our sixth year. They've been a tremendous partner with the Chicago Yacht Club and the greater voting community here in Chicago. And we want to give them a big round of applause. This year, for the first time, there will be a Wintrust uh, team in the racing division. It is that Benetton 40.7 right there with the uh, sale numbers 404. So it's going to be an extra added attraction. We also have our premier sponsor, Omega Watch. They have a boutique, beautiful boutique set up in our main dining room. I uh, encourage you to take an opportunity uh, to visit that, as well as the Race Village here, where we have a number of our supporting sponsors, who include Soul Jets, Sika, Barton and Gray, Blue Point, Blue Plate, Rally's Yacht Yard, Evolution Sales, Mount Gay, Team One Newport, Harkin, Predict Win, and Starline. So let's give a big round of applause to our sponsors, because they make this happen. But most importantly, I want to thank all of you, all of you participants. You are what this race is all about. Uh, have a safe uh, journey as you travel up there. Bear winds following seas and looking forward to seeing each and every one of you up on the island. Thank you. It's, it's now my distinct privilege to be able to introduce our chair of the MAC committee, Sam Bayou. Thank you, Tom. So, uh, I'm not going to keep you here too long. I know that uh, many of you are here to are here to hear from our race officer and our meteorologist. So uh, I'll get on with this quickly. So first of all, uh, just a couple of notes that this meeting, uh, you know, this is a courtesy, well, anyway, uh, courtesy service to our competitors. Oh, I can't see the screen. Um, and that uh, U.S. competitors are responsible for following uh, the uh, notice of race, sailing instructions, uh, and everything that is in uh your rating certificate with that just a couple of things i wanted to mention from the racing rules of sailing uh first is rule two fair sailing we're all here to have fun uh we're all here to fair, to uh to have a fair event uh so with that uh be sure that you're sailing in compliance with your ship in your certificate and then uh second the second thing i'd like to mention is uh decision to race 
uh, decision to race uh, or continue racing is the competitors alone. So uh, if you face conditions, um, you know, that are, that are challenging, if you have issues, you know, it is, uh, it's upon you uh, for the safety of your vessel and your crew. So just wanted to remind everybody out there, it's a big lake and Chris is going to talk about some things that uh, may come through during the race. Uh, quick note on social media. Uh, so if you want to uh, participate in the Chicago Yacht Club Race to Mackinac social media feeds, uh, here's the information for that. Uh, the YB tracking links. So for yellow brick, yellow brick tracking, uh, you all have the YB races app. The race is free. So all of your friends and family can follow along with that. And here we have our, uh, our low bandwidth and text links. Uh, so you can get the tracking data in your software or via text file uh, if you don't have uh, great cell coverage when you're out there on the lake or if you're using uh, satellite coverage. Also this year, uh, we have the uh, YB tracking uh, integrated with Predict Wind Offshore. So if you're using the Predict Wind Offshore app, uh, you'll be able to get the YB tracking data directly in uh, Predict Wind. A uh, couple notes uh, about uh, docking. So again, we will have recycling bins on the island. So all of your uh, recyclable cans and bottles, uh, we'll have the recycling there, please. Uh, put your trash in the dumpsters. There'll be dumpsters uh, at the marina as well as uh, we have dumpsters on the other dock, Skip. Yep, so there'll be dumpsters on all three uh, docking locations in Ireland as well as the off-island docking. Uh, this year, we're pleased to announce that we were able to uh, negotiate with the Michigan DNR to be able to wrap boats in the harbor. So the vast majority of our boats will be going to the island, unlike last year. Uh, however, there are some constraints that are put upon us by that uh, and we do have to follow along with these. So uh, those are all detailed in your sailing instructions. However, uh, things I'd like to highlight is that in the Michigan DNR Harbor uh, on the island, as well as in their other, uh, the other DNR harbors, there is no fueling from portable cans in the marina. So if you are going to fuel your boat up with jerry cans, you will need to do that elsewhere. Uh, the fuel is available on the island at Island Hardware on the cold dock. There's also fuel available in Max City and St. Ignatius. Please call ahead and check the hours. Uh, like everywhere, they have limited staffing, so they may not be open uh, all of the regular hours that you expect. But again, no fueling from jerry cans in the Mackinac Island Harbor. No, no carrying jerry cans down the dock. Uh, a couple other things, no swimming in the harbor. Uh, obviously, electroshock uh, uh, issues there. And then also... Uh, with your uh, shore, if you're going to planning on you bringing your shore power cord with you, uh, if you are in a slip or you're directly against a seawall where there's access to shore power, you are welcome to use it. If you are rafted and, and running that shore power cord would require you to run that cord across another vessel, you cannot do that. Uh, so again, uh, these are the restrictions that we all have to abide by in order to continue to be able to dock our vessels in uh, the DNR Harbor on Mac Island. And, you know, this isn't the race to Mac City. It's not the race to St. Ignace. This is the race to Mackinac Island. So I ask for all your cooperation so we can continue to do that. And then uh, after that, I'd like to introduce Jen Steffler, our principal race officer. Okay. Oh, that was supposed to get hidden. That's Miles. So the starting area will be right out off of the outer break wall, same spot it is every year. Um, many of you will have mentioned that you missed Carrier. Well, Carrier's back this year. She will be our signal boat. And uh, Kurt Lunch has volunteered. Anna Marie is the pin boat. So today you will check in at the pin boat for the cruising start, you check in at the pin boat. So go by, wave, follow your instructions, all those things in the SIs. So there's carrier. You'll see some of the official flags um, on boats. They can be in the exclusion zone. Nobody else should be. If it's not your start, stay out of the way, please. It makes it easier for everybody. Um, Commodore introduced the judges that are hanging out over there. They're hoping to have no business on the island so they can relax, so behave, do all those fun things. Um, one thing, if you have already picked up your tracker, 
it might be good to open your yellow brick app and make sure you see your tracker on there. If you don't see your tracker on there, go up and talk to the yellow brick folks before you leave. Last year, I got to throw a few trackers over the side of the signal boat to boats as they were in their sequence, so they had them. So check them before you leave, it's easier then. If you have not checked in yet, registration is open upstairs. Head up there as soon as you can so we can get everything finalized. And then with that, I'll pass it over to Lieutenant Overstreet. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Jen, Skip, and Sam for uh, your uh, hospitality while we're in town here and for uh, liaising with the uh, Coast Guard. Uh, I don't have a lot to say. Um, we'll try to move this along fairly quickly. You guys know uh, your limits, you know the limits of your vessels. Uh, we'll be out there kind of shadowing the bulk of the fleet. Uh, if you get into trouble, don't hail us directly, hail Coast Guard on Channel 16, uh, and we'll just be coordinating any on-scene assets that arrive. Uh, but other than that, have a safe sail, and we'll see you on the island. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, with that, I'd like to bring up Skip Dybel on the water director. Thank you. They, no, Paul. Uh, okay. Hey, everybody. Great to see you guys uh, ready to go for the MAC race. I got a couple of things to uh, to chat about here. On the on the screen, you'll see the dock map. map. It's A through J. Get to know this dock map because when you finish, you're going to hail the dock team on 72 and you're going to be directed to your zone and your, and your slip. Um, when you finish, wait for your instructions. Please don't come into the harbor or into the dock system and then hail us. Wait for instructions back from the dock team. Um, one important point about this map is that the race committee tent, the race committee's um, headquarters is on the DNR dock this year. That's a change. So that's where you're going to you're, you're going to turn in your yellow brick and your finish cards. With that, um, you all probably can understand and recognize and hopefully appreciate that docking over 200 vessels in a small harbor takes a little bit of doing. We, we it's a it's a game of Tetris that we play and we play a lot um, over the over the course of the winter and the spring. We got up to the Mac Island and we found that the water level is even lower than we thought that it would be. So there's some things that we're still working through. So that's why communication is super important with the dock team that's there and your patience is very much appreciated. The zones are predetermined. All that stuff is bent, will be in your opening under the bridge. Um, if you're doing a touch and go, please make sure that you have your yellow brick and your finish card ready to go before you hail us for touch and go. It makes the process a lot quicker. Last year was awesome and we hope to keep it that smooth again this year. Any changes will be at the direction of the Harbor Master. So don't expect any changes from where you're gonna be. If there is a change, we'll, we will, we'll, we'll let you know, uh, hopefully in advance. Um, after the race, like I said, you're gonna turn in your yellow brick tracker, your finish card at the race committee dock. That's where you're also gonna pick up your drink tickets. There's a little motivation there. Um, and remember that, that we're, we're there for you all and we're trying to get you guys docked safely and enjoying the rest of the race. So um, we're, we're putting in a lot of hours. You all are coming in off of a hard race that, that takes a lot of time. Everyone's a little tired. Let's just be a little tolerable of one another if you, if you don't mind. And then we'll, we'll see you at the, uh, at the mission point for the, for the party. Um, you know, one thing that I do here at the Chicago Yacht Club is I teach the, the fundamentals of racing to both youth and adult. And one thing we talk about is preparation. And I trust that you all are prepared for this race. And with that preparation comes the fun. So I want you all to have a really safe sail, a fun sail, and we'll see you up on the island. Now for what uh, you, you came for. This guy's, uh, this guy's the best, Chris Bedford, come on up. The best meteorologist, that's not really saying much. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so I'm going to try and keep up here so I can read it, but I'll see what you're looking at over there. This will be fun. All right. It's great to be back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it really is. Welcome back and uh, looking forward to an exciting race. And guess what? 
Lake Michigan has it all for you this time. <laughs> Everything you ever dreamed of and had nightmares about will take place over the next couple of days. All right, as always, I'm going to give you my disclaimer. Uh, the weather changes on the lakes quickly and certainly in this race, we're gonna see some, some big changes as you head up. Um, and uh, so you need to kind of keep monitoring the weather conditions, however you choose to do that, whether you have internet connectivity when you're in cell phone range or you have a sat system on board, or at the very least, keep monitoring your NOAA weather radios, your VHF ch uh, weather channels. That's where you're gonna get the, the most up-to-date information. And if there's any watches, warnings, advisories that uh, are posted, you'll hear about them there first. So make sure you're uh, doing that. Don't assume that any weather app you have is necessarily up to date. Sometimes the watches and the warnings advisories take some time to post on your weather app. And a lot of people don't realize when you look at radar imagery on your weather app, it is not real time. There is a delay between the time that the radar actually scans the precipitation and it gets onto your weather app. And that can be up to 15 minutes. And when weather conditions and storms are changing quickly on the lakes, that can make a difference. So don't assume that your weather app is the most up-to-date information. Another thing is people confuse GRIB files with weather forecasts. They are not the same thing. There are many flavors of GRIB files, but only one weather forecast. So basically the GRIB files are guidance that meteorologists use to make weather forecasts. So keep that in mind. And like anything, Weather forecasts, GRIB files are always changing. The minute I walk off this stage, the weather forecast will have changed. So keep that in mind. We're always getting new data. Weather forecast is not a static thing. All right. With that, have fun. All right, we do have a web page. And now that I've admonished you about GRIB files, I'm here to announce that there is a GRIB file available on that page at high resolution. Um, you may want to look at that, but again, it's just another piece of information in the mix of everything else. All right, we have to talk about severe weather. There will be some thunderstorms crossing the lake this weekend, 100% probability of that. You don't hear a meteorologist say that very often, um, but the, uh, there's also a good chance that some of these storms could become severe. Uh, there's a marginal risk from the National Weather Service of some uh, storms moving onto the lake, the southern part of the lake uh, later today and tonight. Uh, and tomorrow, there is a higher risk of cells, particularly later tomorrow afternoon uh, and overnight into Sunday morning. So make sure you're keeping abreast of the situation uh, as you head up the lake because you are very likely to encounter some of those. Most of that activity moves south and east of the lake though by Sunday. So Saturday is our main impact day. I guess it's your main impact day too because it's the only day you'll probably be out there the full day, maybe Sunday, but all right. So here's where our current surface map. Uh, we had a little low pressure area move by last night that brought those cells that we saw uh, just offshore last night. <clears throat> right now we have a high pressure area that's sitting uh, just over northern Illinois and that's going to be moving out to the uh, to the east and we're keeping our attention to two things. First of all that low that you see on the left side of the chart over uh, South Dakota there's another low that's off the chart up to the northwest of that. The second thing we're keeping an eye on is that cold front that's up in Canada northwest of Lake Superior. Those two things are going to interact and that's where we uh, expect to get the weather that comes across the lake tomorrow, tomorrow night into early Sunday morning. So those are our main weather features or as I like to call them forecast problems for the race. All right, you can see right now we've got some uh, debris cloud over ahead of us right now from some old thunderstorms or some thunderstorms out over Iowa. Right now I'm not expecting anything uh, significant today. There may be the odd pop-up shower or thunderstorm along the uh, uh, shoreline, uh, Illinois and Wisconsin, uh, but I think uh, most of the activity is going to hold off until after midnight. Then there will be a few showers and thunderstorms sort of drifting off the Wisconsin-Illinois shore into southern Lake Michigan uh, early tomorrow morning, probably pre-sunrise, and then that activity will clear out. Here's the radar. Um, for, uh, for the moment, as you can see, there's nothing threatening. 
uh, threatening on the lake at the moment. And then uh, here's the wind field this morning. We have sort of a broad uh, northwest flow coming across the lake at the moment, sort of uh, 10 knots. And um, that's going to change. That's going to ease off during the, uh, during the uh, morning today and uh, into the early afternoon this, uh, uh, this afternoon as well. Uh, right now, waves on the lake generally in the one to two foot range, uh, nothing too significant. Uh, water temperature, we always have to talk about water temperature because uh, here on the lake, the uh, lake breeze and the land breezes are really important. Earlier in the year, we had pretty cold lake. It was uh, one of the colder seasons we've had in a while. Uh, but recently here in the last few weeks, we've had a pretty a decent warm up so that now the lake temperature is just about normal if you average the whole lake together. Um, it's a little bit colder than normal up in the northern half of the lake, a little bit warmer than normal in the southern half of the lake. Um, but you'll notice along the Wisconsin shore, there's a bit more colder water, so it hasn't quite warmed up right on the shore there yet. But we need to keep an eye on this relative to the land temperatures to understand whether or not there'll be lake breezes in the day or land breezes at night. Uh, but this year that the water temperature is relatively normal, I don't think we're going to really see um, a, a big, uh, you know, increase in sea breeze or lake breezes or increases in, in land breezes, whatever. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be sort of a normal year. Today seems like the biggest day that will have lake breeze effects. Tomorrow, the breeze trans transitions into more of a gradient wind situation. And in that case, it's more of a, uh, driven by the large scale weather pattern, the approaching low pressure and front system that I talked about, and less about the heating and cooling. That's not to say that there could be a secondary uh, effect on the breeze, sort of like backing it uh, into the Wisconsin shore or veering it more into the Michigan shore uh, during the afternoon tomorrow due to lake breeze effect. But most of the breeze is gonna be, be gradient driven by the time to, we get to tomorrow. So right now I'm not expecting late, late, uh, water temperature to play a big role, um, but it uh, is always worth keeping track of. All right, so surface weather map for this afternoon, we see that first low is out toward Buffalo. We see the high pressure moving south of Chicago and uh, sort of weakening pressure gradient across the lake uh, this afternoon. And then we have a cold front, as I mentioned, up northwest of Lake Superior. You can see that starting, starting to drop south and also that low pressure area nearing Sioux Falls with another low just up off the chart um, to the northwest of that. This is the uh, overall uh, radar loop from one model. So this is just one model's take on what's going to happen. Um, if you look at a different model, it'll be a completely different answer, but they all show at some point showers and thunderstorms moving across the lake. Um, in this case here, this is the rapid refresh model or the HRRR model. I just say rapid refresh because I hate sounding like a pirate. Um, but the HRRR rapid refresh model has a, a few showers moving across the lake, the southern part of the lake. You'll see early tomorrow morning, there they go. Um, and uh, then we have this large area of thunderstorms is what's called a, a mesoscale convective system moving across the lake uh, during uh, uh, late Saturday after, uh, evening and into early Sunday morning. Now, whether or not that actually develops is still up in the air. That is not a sure thing. On the other hand, it is a risk. So again, this is gonna become a bit more of what we refer to in forecasting as a now casting problem uh, when we get to tomorrow to see where those cells are developing, how strong they actually get and whether or not they, they form this um, mesoscale system. Um, that will have a significant impact on the wind field across the lake, as, as you might imagine. Now, toward the end of the loop, we can't quite see it, but there will be a, a northwest shift coming down the lake by Sunday morning. Uh, that doesn't look like it comes with a lot of weather. Uh, looks like most of these cells are out ahead of this, the frontal change, that cold front that I showed you that comes down from the north. Forecast for this afternoon shows that the winds have eased off in the southern part of the lake because we're going to go into a lake breeze regime. So we have southeast winds that will develop along the, the lake front here off Chicago, uh, probably sort of around 10 knots, uh, 10 knot uh, lake breeze, maybe sort of 7 to 12 range. 
but winds kicked around more on shore by that, that, by that lake breeze effect. Further up the lake, we're seeing more of a gradient flow uh, from the south. And in reality, that's, that's kind of our future. Um, the waves, of course, will decrease uh, as the winds die uh, this morning, and then we transition around into the lake breeze. So it looks like relatively flat water uh, for at least the start of the race. Now, tonight, we see some changes on the weather map. The uh, high pressure moved out to uh, the sort of uh, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio triple point, and uh, the low is moving a little bit to the east of, of Sioux Falls at this time, but we see, still see that, that frontal system up north of uh, Lake Superior. We're going through a big transition here, so the weather systems are uh, starting to get um, a little bit more confused, but they'll get more organized once the cold front coming down from the north and the low pressure coming in from the west get, get connected up. But what, I, what we are seeing, if you look carefully, you'll see an isobar that goes through Chicago and Southern Lake Michigan, and another isobar that goes through sort of Northern Wisconsin. Those two isobars are showing us what the wind is gonna do tomorrow. Those two isobars come together over the lake and develop into to a, uh, a southerly gradient. And if we look at the wind forecast for this evening, we can kind of see some of that development over the northern part of the lake. We're losing our lake breeze in the southern part of the lake. It's starting to veer around more into a southerly because we're past the peak heating of the day. So the lake breeze is ending and we're going into more of a, a gradient type of uh, a flow pattern. For, for the weather map uh, tonight, uh, you'll see that uh, that high's gone now out to the uh, east. We see our front starting to move into northern Lake Superior, but it's gonna kind of wait up there for that low pressure, which is now off the chart. It's sort of consolidating off the chart into a deeper low just across the Dakotas. And uh, you'll, you'll notice that they're, they're showing a lot of green on this map. On these maps, the green doesn't mean that's where it's raining. All it means is that's where there's a chance of some rain and some showers and thunderstorms. Um, so it's, it's just indicating that there's a chance, not saying that there's going to be rain in that, that particular area. But we should be developing into a, um, a southerly gradient regime. Now, here's the map for Saturday, uh, tomorrow morning, and you can see broadly that there's southerly wind uh, coming up the lake. Now, look off the, the shore just to the uh, west of... Um, uh, off the Wisconsin shore, southeastern Wisconsin, and uh, you'll see this little outflow boundary. That's indicating that there is actually a, a, the model is producing a rain cell over southern Wisconsin that is going to be moving, moving to the east. And as I said earlier on, it does look like there's going to be some cells moving off the shore into the southern third of the lake uh, tonight and mostly tomorrow morning. Uh, prior to sunrise, and that's the indication of that. So what you see there is the wind flowing out from the from the rain cell, at least as the model generates it. You can see also a cell up in the northern part of the lake as well. By tomorrow morning, you start to see the consolidation of that uh, uh, low pressure area over um, the Dakotas, stronger low, and with that we get a stronger southerly wind field over the southern part of the lake. And uh, we see that starting to increase. It's a little bit confused at first left over from the leftover cells that have moved through, but, but we do tend to see a building southerly on Saturday up through the mid portion of the lake. The sea state, of course, will be uh, picking up where those winds uh, increase and they could see sort of a one to two feet across a good portion of the lake by, by tomorrow morning. Now on Saturday, uh, those the cells from the previous night will have dissipated and we're kind of in the, the calmer spot between the, the morning showers, the early morning showers tomorrow in the southern part of the lake and that big main weather system moving out into the lake Saturday night. And uh, so this is the forecast for uh, the wind across the lake, basically showing a broad southerly flow sort of around um, we we'll call it sort of nine to 14 knots broadly, a little bit lighter this time up in the northern part of the lake, stronger in the southern part of the lake as the gradient starts to get organized around that low. There's the forecast for Saturday evening. And um, we start to see the, uh, uh, the, the wind, um, uh, the low pressure moving toward the upper Mississippi Valley. And we start to see a higher risk of cells moving out into the lake. We also see the, the uh, cold air pooling up in, in Canada, getting ready to push south as soon as that low moves out to the east. And now we start to see a much 
uh, bigger effect from, from that low pressure. On the left side is a rather ominous looking chart, which shows a, a rather large cell, what's called that mesoscale complex. Remember I showed you moving into the Western part of the lake, but you'll see another model on the right-hand side doesn't show it yet. So this is the, this is, this is, sorry, there we go. There's the ominous looking wind in the Western part of the lake, uh, in the Southern part of the lake tomorrow evening. So this is, the, this is the thing about weather models. They're not perfect. Sometimes they, some models predict one thing, another model predicts another thing. We don't know which one of them is going to be right. They're, they're both, at this point, you kind of consider them both equally probable solutions. And so you it's, it's more to have an awareness of the possibility of cells moving out into the lake and what may happen should those cells develop. If they don't, you're golden. You're just uh, going north in a nice uh, moderate to possibly fresh southerly breeze. But if they do come out into the lake, then you, know, you have to respond to them as, as they do so. This is that mesoscale complex moving out in the lake as it appears on, on the model. So that's that feature that is causing that big outflow uh, boundary on that, that uh, particular model run. Uh, obviously, this, this here just shows the broad uh, sea state increase on Saturday with a, a broad southerly uh, flow of breeze picking the sea state up to two, maybe up to three feet. And then the wind field Saturday morning, that's when things start to get uh, quite quite uh, interesting because this, this is just before, uh, this is where most of the weather is moving, moving or moved across the lake. And we're starting to get um, uh, the hints of that Northwest breeze will start to appear in the upper left-hand corner of some of these charts. Now on this chart here on the left-hand side, the remnants of that, that thunderstorm area I showed you are moving out into Michigan. That same system didn't appear on the chart on the model on the left, Instead, it showed, uh, it, should, it should be Sunday, thank you. Um, so, so on this one here, it shows the, um, uh, the weather up in the northern part of the lake, all right? So again, you have to keep monitoring the weather conditions as you go along. Uh, what, what we show here today is gonna be different by the time you get in the northern part of the lake because the conditions will change. Um, and then on Sunday, uh, morning, the surface weather map shows that low pressure finally moved across. That low pressure moves across with all that weather. And then we start to get the cold fronts moving south uh, from Canada. And the first one looks like it comes through Sunday morning. That'll be kind of a false shift. Um, the wind's going to try and go into the west behind all those, um, all that weather, but then it's actually going to rotate back to the southwest a bit. And uh, so we'll have southwest winds continuing on Sunday morning, and then there'll be another uh, shift with that next front, which fortunately looks like it's going to come through without a whole lot of weather associated with it. So this is the forecast for midday on Sunday. And if you look up across the upper peninsula, you see all the winds have shifted into the north. Those north winds are moving into the waters around Gray's Reef at this time. So that second front is dropping down. Uh, Sunday morning, and we'll get that shift coming through. But like I said, that shift looks like it's going to be a relatively quiet one. It's the first batch of um, uh, the low pressure actually moving across that causes all the weather. And then here's the forecast for Sunday morning, which shows a broad northwest flow uh, across the northern sort of quarter of the lake, still working its way south across the rest of the lake. And then by Monday, all that shift has has moved through and it's actually moved down across the, um, uh, the entire lake by, by Monday morning. And we're sort of in a broad uh, 15 to 20 knot Northwest flow. Here's the surface weather map for Monday showing that uh, the fronts are all now Southeast of the lakes and high pressure moving in from the West. There we go. High pressure moving in from the West uh, indicating that uh, with the isobars lining up showing a Northwest flow there. All right, so here's the sea state on Monday. We show a uh, uh, northerly wind. It might actually be rougher than this on Monday, uh, but in the northern part of the lake, of course, the fetch is less, so, so it may not have de developed quite as much. All right, on the rooting analysis, again, you can't take too much, um, you can't put too much into these, these uh, rooting studies because as you saw, even the models that you use 
even the models that you use are um, uh, change changeable. So one, de depending on what model you use, you may get a, a different answer. The big takeaway, in my opinion here, though, is that this is largely a, a gradient rum line race. It's not uh, a race necessarily about trying to be on one shore for the lake breeze and then getting to the other shore for the land breeze and setting up for the following day's lake breeze. I think this is largely a gradient race. The exception being just the start, just today, there's liable to be better pressure al right along the, the Illinois shore as you head up to the north. And then as you get up to the north and the wind starts to veer as the lake breeze dies, then you can head out uh, into the middle, middle of the lake and start, start more or less VMG running up the lake. So uh, this, that's the takeaway that I have from, from this, this race. Now, um, the forecast here looks, looks very you know, simple on these charts, but again, just beware of the high probability of some thunderstorms. This is the Great Lakes, things change quickly. So it's best to assume the worst and, uh, and prepare accordingly, rather than just expecting the best. You may have done this race 35 times and not had a problem. This could be the race that you have a problem at one of these cells. So treat the weather with respect and have a safe, fast trip up. It looks like it's going to be faster than last year anyway. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, what? One mix. Yeah, you. So uh, before we get uh, before we uh, wrap up here today, again, I'd like to thank uh, presenting sponsor Windtrust and all of our other sponsors, uh, Omega, Soljet, Sika, and everyone else. But I'd like to bring up Jen Stepler, our PRO, to announce the wind mix. So our wind mix for the cruising division will be off wind. Thank you. So, uh, so I I look forward to seeing all of you out there. Uh, I am uh, turning in turning in my uh, race chair hat and uh, joining the hat, uh, joining you as a competitor uh, in the cruising division today. So see you all on the island. <laughs>